We first bought our solar PV system back in May 2021. After some back and forth with the installer regarding the number of panels, roof positioning and component options, we were given a detailed quote regarding what kind of performance we could expect over the life of the system. The quote was very detailed. It had a great section on expected payback time, of course based on a number of assumptions. Here we can see our installer mention of 5-6 to six year payback. It's worth talking here about what payback time really means. And no, it's not a Steven Seagal film. The payback time is the expected time to recoup the initial cost of the system, either through money earned from exporting excess energy back into the grid, or from electricity we haven't had to use from the grid in the first place because we're using our own solar energy. Once the payback period has elapsed, the system is effectively generating free energy, so long as it keeps running. The payback period listed here is a discounted payback period. This is financial jargon, meaning the payback period takes into account the time value of money. Hypothetically, if we invest $100 today and earn $10 from it in 5 years time, that $10 is not as good as it sounds today because of inflation and other things. Another way to think about it is, if we didn't buy solar PV, we could let the money sit in a bank account and it would earn interest. This assumes we actually keep the money in the bank rather than going on a holiday to see a giant sheep. So what assumptions did our installer make when estimating the payback time? Firstly, there's an assumption about how much energy the system will generate. Things which affect this are weather, dirt build up on the panels, and a slight expected degradation of panel efficiency over time. There's also an assumption about how much energy we will self-consume versus export back to the grid. Here the assumption is that we will self-consume 65% of what the panels generate. We will see why this is important for any payoff calculation a bit later. Finally, there are assumptions about the current cost of grid electricity and expected price increases over time. So how does this payback compare to reality one and a half years on? Let's take a look at the data in Power BI. By the way, feel free to check out other videos on this channel for how we manage to prepare and ingest live system data for analysis in Power BI. First tab we're going to look at is the actual payback versus projected payback. The chart at the bottom shows a predicted payback over time compared to actual payback. We can see that the lines are pretty close. One thing we can also notice is the actual payback is fluctuating throughout different times of the year. This is pretty much what we expect because in summer we're generating a lot more energy, so the payback is higher. How long will we take to pay back the system based on the current payback rate? Well, so far the system is earning $3.20 per day and has paid back $1,640. This translates to a simple payback period of 6.77 years and a discounted payback period of 8.07 years. These are both a bit longer than the installer predicted, but there are a few reasons for this. Firstly, in calculating the actual payback, we are also making a number of assumptions. These are captured as parameters in Power BI. As an example, we are paying 21.5 cents per kilowatt hour for grid energy, whereas the initial system quote included a higher estimate. We are also calculating payback based on a higher interest rate than the installer assumed. Here it is 4.49% per annum. This is used for our calculation of the discounted payback period. Lastly, we are calculating payback based on about one and a half years of data. This means we are calculating the payback based on two winter seasons, but only one summer season. This anomaly makes the daily payback less than what it would be than if our data was evenly distributed throughout times of the year. It should fix itself over time as we get more data from the system. As we can see from the chart at the bottom, the actual payback pretty much catches up with the projected trend line over summer, meaning we're not that far off the installer's projection. Next, let's take a look at the daily payback tab. The chart at the bottom shows daily total payback, and we can see days in summer tend to produce higher payback than in winter. This is what we expect because, well, the blue bars are the dollar value of money saved by not having to import energy from the grid. For example, if the system generates 5 kilowatt hours and our air conditioner or oven is running at the same time and uses that 5 kilowatt hours, that's 5 kilowatt hours we don't have to use from the grid. We'd otherwise be paying around 20 cents per kilowatt hour, so that's roughly $1 payback. Interestingly, the saved retail cost is fairly constant over the year. Green bars represent the dollar value of energy exported to the grid. In other words, where we're earning a feed-in tariff for selling excess energy. 
This payback component is a lot more variable throughout the year, peaking around New Year's when there is the most generation. Lastly, the yellow line on the secondary y-axis of the top chart shows average self-consumption rate in percent. In winter we are self-consuming around 80% of what we generate. In summer, this figure is more like 40%. Especially on long and mild summer days, our household does not have enough appliances to soak up the energy being generated. This is where something like an EV on a smart charger would be great. Based on current energy and feed-in rates, a high self-consumption rate is great for payback. At least in our case, our retail rate is around 21 cents and our feed-in rate is around 7 cents. So financially, it's around three times better to use each kilowatt hour rather than export it back to the grid. So we've had a look at the actual payback so far and what this looks like from day to day. We saw that actual payback is a bit different to what the installer predicted, but it's not far off. We also saw that some of the differences are down to different assumptions made in the initial quote versus reality. However, now that the system is running, even some of the actual payback assumptions can change. For example, the price of grid energy, average daily generation, or the self-consumption rate. Let's go to the Payback Simulator tab and take a look at what tweaking some of the assumptions might do to the payback period. Firstly, energy prices have gone up since the initial install. The rate we are now paying for grid energy is 24.2 cents per kilowatt hour. Let's plug in 24 cents. The feed-in rate has also changed since we got the system. Long story short, we now get a slightly higher rate for the first 10 kilowatt hours we export per day, but a slightly lower rate for any kilowatt hours after this. Let's assume that the glass is half empty. And let's reduce that to 6 cents per kilowatt hour. Now let's take a look at average daily generation. We haven't factored in the panel degradation in either of the previous tabs. However, Melbourne has also had a pretty cloudy winter this year. Hopefully future years won't be so bad. So let's leave that as is. Next, the average self-consumption percentage. This is something we can control, sort of. For example, we recently bought a new hot water heater and have this on a timer to run when it is typically sunny. Over time, this should increase our self-consumption rate. So let's make this figure 50% to account for the expected uplift. Lastly, we will leave the discount rate as is. After making all these changes, we can see the payback period has also changed. It's slightly shorter than our original projection, which is good news. In conclusion, we looked at the payback to date of our solar PV system. We saw that due to slightly different assumptions made in the initial quote, the actual payback period is also different. However, the installer quote was not that far off. We also saw that there are some external factors and even consumption pattern changes that can change the payback period and even shorten it. For example, an increase in the cost of grid energy. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching.